Hi, I'm Kylie G. Welcome to my little corner of the interweb where I talk about all things yarny. It has been a hot minute since I was last here. I think it's three, maybe four weeks since I last recorded a podcast. Um, the trouble and the challenge when you are a podcaster on your own is working hard enough and knitting enough so that there's enough good content for me to share with you. I um, it's It's been a busy four weeks for me in terms of work, knitting, shopping, and I got sick again. So as a result of that, um, it's been a little while since I had an opportunity to come talk to you. So today I'm going to share with you some... A half finished object, a hoe as we call them, H O as we call them in the knitting um, world. I've got um, a couple of, I've made some good progress on some of my, my makes. I've made a decision about the blanket that I talked about in the last episode. And I have done. A hell of a lot of shopping. So we're in August and I promised at the beginning of the year that I wasn't going to buy any more yarn. Who was I kidding? Really? Because, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. So, and I also want to talk to you about my most worn knit, which I'm wearing at the moment now I wear this like like a a robe around the house it's my I'm at home being cozy and cuddly um cardi the pattern is um starlight by, I've looked at this three times while I was getting ready to record. Quiet Stars. Quiet Stars by Hohe Locatelli. Now this is a fingering weight cardigan that goes down to the middle of my thigh. It's a commitment to knit. Just saying. So if you're going to fall in love with it, which I highly recommend you do because it is just an amazing knit, I would Buckle in, bucko, because it's going to take you a long time to knit. Um, I cast this on on a whim. I don't know if I've shown it on the podcast before, but it goes all the way. Yeah, down to there. I'm not going to leave it on for very long because it's quite warm under the lights. And I've turned the fan off because you can... Now that I've got my new microphone, let me pick this up and show you. How's that for a little bit of profesh, hey? Um, now it's going to go clunk, clunk when I put it down. I hope it didn't go too clunky. Um, but now I've got that new microphone, you can actually hear every single sound out of the fan in this room. So um, I'm not going to wear this for long. But I knit this out of Lolo Did It. Shock, shock. In the oh, colorway, colorway, Kylie Narnia, the Narnia colorway. Um, it has such a fabulous, unique construction, and these gorgeous lace panels that are really quite simple. Oops, are really quite simple right across the back there um really quite simple but um really interesting to knit create a really interesting knit the other thing that i want to say about this is that um there's a texture that takes place through the majority through the entire garment that is wonderful to knit so it's a very very engaging knit now I just recently 
purchased, which I'll get to later, a gleaner because because this is merino cashmere silk, I want to say. Yes, merino cashmere silk. Probably because, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, bougie like that. Um, I'm just opening that up. Figuring. Yeah, merino silk and cashmere. Hello. Um, it the cashmere in it has caused it to peel. So because I absolutely live in this, um, I actually went to grab it to put it on to come to record today, and it was you know, sort of, I'd taken it off at some point over the weekend and thrown it over the back of the couch where I sit. So it it is always out and about. Um, it has a lovely, lovely texture in the in the cuff. Um, it also, the, um, the pattern, with, in the pattern it comes with a tie that you would sort of sit in here, which I didn't do. And I tell you what, you don't need it because this shawl colour, Look at that. It's just lovely. I alternated skeins as I always do. Um, I'm not entirely sure how long it took me to knit, but once I got going, I was pretty monogamous on this. April to June, mid April to end of June. So it's not too bad, hey? That's two months. Um, and I, I'm, I'm never a completely monogamous knitter. So there we go. Okay. A little bit of a uh, costume change there. Um, I ducked out and told my husband that he was just a little bit noisy. Okay. First things first. Buckle up. Um, <laughs> it's been a it's, it's been a while. Okay, this is a little. Um, I, I realised that I didn't talk a lot about the bags that I use. Um, I've got a couple of favourites. This one I made out of some just some quilting fat quarters that I bought at Spotlight, which is our kind of like our. An Australian version of Michael's if I, I think um, and I just looked up on YouTube how to make a zipper bag it's, it's soft and it's and this is what I put my socks in and it squishes down quite nicely and goes in my handbag that <clears throat> like most women's handbags is way bigger than it needs to be um my hoe Hi ho! It is one of my Bruno's builder socks, um, made with Nunda woolen mill, eighty-five, seventy-five twenty-five sock yarn in the lime colorway and the navy colorway. It is a vanilla sock for a size twelve foot. I hope that noise isn't bothering you. I've had to turn the air conditioning on because this room is quite stifling at the moment. And it's winter here in the tropics. Go figure. Um, I've, I did the my favourite heel, which is the honeycomb heel. So it's a gusset. Um heel flap and gusset heel finish which is the one I like the most um so that's my hoe honest to god I didn't think I'd ever get this sock done um but to avoid second sock syndrome I immediately cast on the second sock I know right um we over the weekend spent a bit of time in the car we drove up 
to the Atherton Tablelands, which is um, so we're down on the coast and up on the Tablelands. It's it's almost Savannah Plains up that way. Um, and my mother-in-law had a mastectomy um, a number of years ago, and that sadly and frightening oh, it, it begs to question. Um, we have to drive two hours inland to an independently owned lingerie shop for her to be able to purchase, um, get access to her prosthetics and um, and bras that um, house the prosthetic breast. Um, I think that's just disgusting. I really think that's disgusting. Anyway, it's what it is. So, um, anyway, so I cast this on um maybe friday night and was just finishing the ribbing when we got in the car on saturday morning and look i've turned the heel i'm into the foot and well into the foot how great is that so um yeah really really pleased with that i'll get that finished in the next little while because i've got a lot of car knitting coming up and um yeah so that's my first whip ho whip whip ho um now i've got loads of this yarn um I'm, and i'm just knitting until i run out and then changing over the balls um i easily get um a sock i, I would easily get a whole sock out of one of Nunder Woolen Mills sock yarn balls um, and I think I pay eight Australian dollars which I think is about I don't know I was gonna say eleven dollars American eleven dollars US no clue I'm not an economist although I should be for the amount I shop but um, yeah it's it's an inexpensive yarn and it wears reasonably well it wears actually pretty well yeah quite like it i like it for socks because it comes in a oh just a myriad of colors like really fabulous colors um and because i buy it so often i've got a color card that i use to select all my cards this one here it's called Kuman. Mm. This one here. Kuman. Can you see that? Love that colour. Yeah. Lots of really vibrant bright colours. That teal is gorgeous as well. So yeah, I bought the card so that um, I can sit and make decisions about <laughs> what colour socks I'm gonna knit. So yeah, there you go. There you go. Let me just put it. Okay. So that was my first whip. My second whip. You've seen this before as well. This is my fancy as or fancy AF <laughs> cardigan is what I'm calling it. It is actually the No Frills cardigan by Petite Knit. And I'm just, who knows when I'm going to wear this seriously. This is where I was when we last chatted. There, I think. May have knitted a little bit. But I'm certainly, I'm on Sleeve Island. I just wanted to, um, at the time I didn't have any plain knitting on my needles um, in terms of just knit 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 so I cast on the um, I picked up the stitches for the sleeve and decided that I was going to knit the slip oh that might have been where I was when I last chatted that would make sense haven't done loads on it because um, I've been knitting other things <laughs> You know, I'm not a monogamous knitter. So what am I knitting this out of? I'm knitting this out of, again, Nundle Woolen Mills. Um, it's their fancy 
I said I call it my fancy AF cardigan because it's this is alpaca merino and silk in the tea rose colorway I believe Am I remembering that correctly yes tea rose which is just this gorgeous soft soft pink dusty a little bit dirty pink it's blowing out oh no that's probably quite true to color there it's just lovely and I'm pairing that with just a cream kid silk um, that I picked up from my local yarn store which is in Sydney which is about 3,000 kilometers away <laughs> my local yarn store is that far away um, but they're kid silk um, I can't I, I'm not entirely certain what but oh yes I am now here look at this Kremke soul wool silky kid in the can't read it but that colorway so that's the no frills cardigan really loving this knit I would say in all honesty that this is not a beginner's knit um, the construction is lovely um, but it also the um, the pattern reads like you know how to knit it's it, it wouldn't be what I would recommend as your first raglan cardigan because they the pattern assumes that you know what you're doing a little bit more than um, yeah then you would if this yeah you you would need to be sorry what a day um you would need don't knit this the first raglan card as the first raglan cardigan oh my lord when I explain to you what my day has been like so far in a moment you're going to understand why I'm tripping over my tongue like I am it's been a day it's been a month people who am I kidding it's been a month <laughs> it's been one hell of a month anyway so um, really loving that knit it's knitting up into such a pretty pink it's just delightful um, next okay I reached out to one of the people who watched my podcast who watches my podcast on the regular or you know had watched it last time anyway and she's an Aussie knitter and I asked her if she knew of any Aussie um, Australian dyers or uh, indie yarn dyers that um, I could um, maybe you know purchase some stuff from because a lot of my stuff comes from the US or the UK and there's nothing wrong with that I'm I have no problem with supporting um, indie dyers from all over the world because um, if their stuff is amazing I want to be knitting with it um, but and I'm sorry I can't remember your name I'm gonna put your name on the screen here as a huge huge thank you actually no I won't put your name there no maybe you don't want me to share your name um, but you know who you are you gave me an incredibly long list of um, indie dyers who are Australian and I might have looked at all of their shops <clears throat> more about that later anyway in that hunt I actually found an Australian an Australian knitwear designer that I hadn't heard of before and I love discovering new designers um, and what what tickled me about this particular pattern it came up in my feed and this is called the Corindai the Corindai I'll show you that which is just this gorgeous shawl 
Now it's pronounced Corindai. Okay. And the reason I know that is because I lived down the road from Corindai for 10 years. It is a hop, skip and a jump from Nundawoola Mill, where I get a lot of my so all my sock yarn from pretty much and um the designer Catherine Ryan Catherine Ryan actually lives in Willow Tree which is pretty much you know in country New South Wales in Australian country outback terms is literally around the corner probably a little too far to go for dinner but when you live out that way you would <laughs> you know it's probably an hour up the road um so corindai willow tree nundle i just i saw it i bought it i cast it on now what i'm going to do is i'm going to knit this all in yarn from northwestern new south wales so from it probably a hundred kilometer radius around Corindai. Um, my daughter lives probably two hours from Corindai out on Cal Station, one of my twin daughters. So it's yeah. So this is gonna be my Tamworth shawl. It's not far from Tamworth. I might call it country music or something, I don't know. But what I'm knitting it with now I'm really just this far in. But this is just garda garda garda. Now I have made a couple of modifications. Um, the increases ask that you you do the increase on the last stitch. I'm doing every second row is an increase row and I'm increasing on the second to last stitch so that I get a nice edge like that. So it blocks nicely. But so I'm doing it very, very similar to the colors that are in the pattern. Um, so I've got black corindai, um, black nundle sock wool yarn. Um, I've got the gray that I'm going to use. And then I've got this cream color. Um, this is called shade 16. doesn't have it oh hang on no it does no it doesn't anyway so that color it does call for one other color and I'm just going to pop over here I'll be right back it's just making sure it's just making sure that it was the yarn that I was thinking of now this is um, yarn by yarn by Jane who lives just not far from Nundle and this is her salamander color colorway and it's a 75 25 436 yards 398 meters so it's it's an and it's just look at that oh excuse me pinks and browns and creams and I think that will just make such a stunning shawl so I'll have to skein that up actually because I want to take this I'm about to go on a bit of a road trip so get yeah, the Corinda shawl so really proud of that and the story that that evokes for me is um, reminiscent of yeah a time in my life when my kids were babies and um, and I traveled that area a fair bit for work so yeah very cool um next whip is buried in here a little bit my second half and half wrap now this got lots and lots and lots of love when I developed the flu I got about 10 days after I had recovered recovered and I use the term loosely from 
um, COVID, I fell foul of the flu. Now, I'm just going to say, people, if you're sick, stay home. I had a colleague who um, came into work, you know, toughing it out, braving it through, and he came to work with the flu. And I have watched, <laughs> I have watched all of my colleagues that sit in our area of the building fall like dominoes with just terrible, terrible flu. So I was unwell enough that I couldn't work even from home for um, a little while, but I managed to get a little bit of knitting done in between naps, blowing my nose and taking cold and flu medication, following the directions, of course. Um, and my half and half wrap. So this is in the powder colorway. This is Coast yarn, which is 50% merino, 50% cotton by Holst Garn. Now I buy this yarn in cones like this. I've probably got about six cones. I haven't got, I've knit a cardigan, long shawls, um, and I haven't finished one yet. I haven't finished a skein yet. Really, this stuff just eon. It it just miles and miles and miles. It that they do actually say on the cone how much you get in the on the cone. Ah, uh, no clue. It's the powder colorway. I think it's five thousand meters. I might be wrong. Anyway, um, they're linked below if you're interested because I do talk about them all the time. So this is the powder colorway and it's just this gorgeous soft pink. Now I have paired it with a crew. So that's my half and half wrap. Isn't that just most feminine combination now I've been smart this time I haven't cast on 300 stitches I've only cast on 270 or whatever the pattern called for um, I'm well in oh, I'm not oh, I was gonna say I'm well into the second color Who am I kidding not even close into the second color I'm really just you know I barely even left the starting gate but um, in the that color but it is just is it honest to god this is like knitting and i'm holding it single um not many people knit with this single because it is so very thin i would call this um a light fingering to lace weight um somewhere in that vicinity um it's certainly a light fingering i wouldn't call it a fingering it's not if I compare it to, oh my god, I've always got yarn sitting about. Where are we? Here we go. This is one I can see. I can easily. Rip. Now you get to see how bloody unorganised I am. Sorry, pardon my French. You speak French, don't you? Um, yeah. Compared to the two, and look, when people ever do this in podcasts, I sort of look at it and go, really, I can't see that, love. I have to, I'm going to have to lean forward and look closer at the telly. <laughs> but yeah, it's certainly, it's a light fingering for sure. Um, isn't that gorgeous? That's the Yeti colorway by Lola did it in the cashmere. Merino cashmere silk. Anyway, so there we go. That's whip number four, because, you know, I don't knit enough. I haven't got enough on the needles, have I? <laughs> but, yeah, that's nice potato chippy knitting. Um, sadly, travelling with um, the cones isn't as easy as it could be, but we'll see. Now, 
I know, right? You're shaking your head at me. Now, we had a bit of a chat about what t-shirt I should make with this gorgeous northbound knitting silk, merino silk, 50-50 merino silk in the Victorian colourway. So that's, it's looking very grey there, very silver. But there are, there are kisses of mauve and powder pink in there which is lovely okay so I got to thinking I, know, I shouldn't do it because it generally means it's going to cost me money and a hell of a lot of heartache but I got to thinking that mm, what if I knit it with held it double with this gorgeous Lana Gatto and the Ballerina. <laughs> yeah, in the Ballerina pink colorway. Now I've just gone and made quite the mess now. Anyway, let me pop that there and I'll show you. Now, this has the tiniest of tiniest little, I don't know if you can see that. That's what she said. <laughs> um, <laughs> the tiniest of tiny little pink sequins on it. And I got... I wanted to knit a relatively large swatch to work out whether I was going to do that and I got this far and then realized that I was actually going to have trouble ordering more of that yarn because I don't have enough I mean I've got I've got enough yarn I don't have enough of this particular color do you ever do that you know you um sorry tangent do you ever do that do you ever th decide that you're going to make a project and get all um all excited about it only to realize you don't have just the right color so you order just the right color by the time it arrives you've decided to do something else with just that right color yeah me too anyway so I don't know if you but that is making just the nicest fabric and I'm going to a black tie wedding in November um, for my niece and I think I'm going to design my own sweater And we're, I think that with a charcoal grey pewter coloured straight skirt would be stunning. And I might make the skirt too. If I can't buy one. But yeah, so I'm really, really liking the fabric that this is making. I might, I think it could be a little bit... Um, less dense so I might go up a needle size what needle size is this I haven't got a gauge handy um but yeah so that's um that is some knitting that I'm gonna get done which I'm um I'm quite excited about I and knitting a swatch I think if you approach knitting a swatch like it's another project is the smart way to go um, then you don't get fed up with the knitting of the swatch you turn that into um, a project in and of itself where you get to know your your knitting a little bit better and 
how the yarn feels in your hands before you embark on a project that could take you down quite the rabbit hole so I did manage to order more of this um, which is a stunning yarn even if I choose not to do this but I really like I really like the idea of wearing um, something I made to a black tie event and I think that's that's just stunning I don't know that I'd wear it all that often afterwards but even just with a pair of jeans or something would be quite you know and high heels nice pair of heels dressed up to go out to dinner with my super fancy husband who always looks better than I do when we go out always anyway so how exciting is that the design that I'm thinking that I will do is is quite boat necky and low in the back and then perhaps some um, um, lace weight knitted ruching anyway we'll see um, I've got until November which is you know three months away who knows actually really looking forward to that catching up with family and all that and that's pretty much everything I've been knitting on I'll put this away put that over there um now I did a bit of shopping because I decided that I'm an Australian podcaster so I should probably showcase some Australian indie dyers and small business owners um, who I believe are doing a fabulous job so you're only ever going to see something on here if I absolutely love it and, and I love this yarn so much that if I hadn't already bought something quite extravagant I would have bought it twice without realizing it so um, the grocery girls are big fans of circus tonic uh, circus tonic home made handmade circus tonic handmade they are based in South Australia so almost a whole continent away from me in the middle of the great Australian bite so if you look at Australia and it's got that the bite looks like somebody's taken a bite out of the bottom of our country that the state immediately that on that coastline is South Australia so and I live in the pointy bit at the top so they're basically a continent away from me but this colorway is called Galar G-A-L-A-H now in Australia and uh, named after a bird in Australia there's a bird called the Galar which is like a parrot and it is gray and pink and white it has pink tipped wings and and I just think Mother Nature knows best because she's put some amazing colours into our wildlife and has paired them, has paired it all beautifully. And the beautiful thing about Circus Tonic Handmaid's Yarn is that um, her inspiration very often comes from nature. So this is the Galar colourway. Now I bought a sweater's quantity of this this just makes me so happy I don't know what this is going to be yet but I have knit with um, Circus Tonic Handmaid's Yarn before and I do like it this is their Jubilee Sock Base which is 75.25 so I'm all about the squish factor when it comes to knitting because wearing 
prickly yarn in the tropical climate I live in it it's a bit heavy going um, it well it's just unpleasant it's not nice at all so um, yeah it's gorgeous squishy soft um, it's a quite a tight tightly spun base and I don't know what this is going to be when it grows up but I can see this in a really cute t-shirt three-quarter t-shirt or something um, but yeah four skeins of that and if you are fortunate enough to um, to come across some of the yarn in um, in the shop when it's there I highly suggest you hit buy because it it's it goes really really quickly it gets snagged up quite quickly so I can pop that away now because it's been sitting out waiting for me to show you which makes it harder to hide it from my husband <laughs> not that he cares he really doesn't or maybe it's maybe every now and then I get into trouble <clears throat> I mean that tongue-in-cheek please um, now the other yarn that I bought from Circus Tonic Handmade is same base Jubilee socks so that's the 7525 and this is the Cosmos colorway which is this gorgeous petrol blue but there's a sheen on that that's just lovely now I bought another sweaters quantity of that as well now I could knit in this room for a very long time without having to um, buy any more but you know it's like I say shopping is the second part of my hobby isn't it really okay so then I bought myself there's more yarn don't worry then I bought myself a cleaner now I got mine on Amazon um, I'm yet to use it on my um, cardigan but I did actually buy it for my um, cashmere merino cashmere silk cardigan that I wear all the time in the Narnia blue that I had on at the beginning of the podcast I wear it all the time but it's pilling quite terribly which you get with cashmere um, and I don't mind it um, hopefully one shave will get rid of it I have heard that, um, that removing it once is generally enough now I this here is a silk merino silk 50 50 merino silk and I think this might peel a little bit it might not it hasn't yet um, and I've worn this a bit so um, yeah but I got I, I didn't buy the travel one because I figured they're small enough anyway and you know but it comes with the extra bits and was brilliant for getting cat hair off my couch um, my cat Bob Bobcat um, is grey and my couch isn't except in the spot where he sits a lot and it I, I normally use um, a you know a disposable glove you know the yeah, disposable gloves you know the rubber latex gloves and rub the couch and that's a really good way of getting his cat fur off but that worked really really well too so yet to use it on woolens so can't tell you whether or not I love it for woolens and it wasn't all that expensive on Amazon and came really quickly even here in Australia um, yeah I understand that Amazon rabbit hole I might have put some sunglasses at the same time <laughs> so 
so that's another thing I bought a tool I bought so if you have you used the gleaner have you got any tips is there is there something I should know about using the gleaner that they don't tell you on the packet it doesn't say it on the box or people don't actually talk about it put some comments in the in the down and you know below let me know what you think mm. anyway so a little bit more yarn I um green tea yarns is a yarn dyer I think I'm not sure where she is she's Australian but she is known apparently for her luxury yarns now unless you haven't already worked out I'm a little bit fond of silk well How does a hundred percent silk mulberry silk sound to you does it look as just delightful as it actually is my gosh um this is fingering weight because that's sort of my go-to weight that i need and it's called um time traveler I, this will be a shawl this will grow up to be a shawl because I've I only got the two skeins um, because that's all she had in the shop I think yeah I'm pretty sure otherwise I would have bought a sweater quantity um, it is it has this sheen and this tonal variance in it that are just lovely now green tea yarns are on a bit of a holiday at the moment um, I think they might be doing the loop I could be wrong I don't know they're on a bit of a holiday at the moment um, I, f I follow them on Instagram um, I'll have all the links down below um, but her yarn is just oh, this is just squishy and delightful it is a luxury buy absolutely but she's an Aussie so compared to um you know once uh, the shipping for me is what kills it for buying yarn overseas for me um and shipping here in australia is is just far more reasonable and and the prices of the yarn very evenly matched to what it is overseas in fact you know with the exchange rate it's probably cheaper for me to buy australian yarn um so I'll probably be doing a little bit more of that. She says as I'm sitting here looking at wall of yarn on the other side of here. Over there. Um, yeah. Six foot bookcase. Packed to the hilt. Anyway. So yeah, just just gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Uh, that's not all. I'm sorry sorry not sorry who am i kidding so i have never never have i ever drink it's a boozy ginger beer mm. i've got a little bit of work to do after this for work um well getting ready for stuff and um I think it's going to be far more pleasant with a little bit of boozy ginger beer on board. It's very sweet though. Um, okay, now, if you know, you know. Madeline Tosh. Now, I've never knit with Madeline Tosh. And this is the Madeline Tosh Twist Light, which is their 7525 base now there you go so that's 45 Australian dollars I think this is like 30 
to Australian dollars. So it's thirteen dollars the difference. And you know, well, here in Australia we we grow some sheep. We have a lot of them. So I mean, you know, we've got some of the um, the finest yarn, of finest merino in the world is is grown here in Australia. So um, it's. It's just that it's nice to knit with stuff that you see other podcasters knitting with, people in the community knitting with. And I mean, who could who could pass up this stunning tannany tea colour? It's called, the colour is Bay Horse. And if I'm using them together, I am going to need to alternate skeins because there is quite a difference but I got two that's all they had in the shop and at 90 Australian dollars for two skeins of yarn um yeah decadent much anyway it's just it, it's nice to have it I and again this is yarn out of Fort. I didn't know they were in Fort Worth, Texas. There you go. No wonder we like them. <laughs> um, I don't know what this is going to be when it grows up, but I. Yeah, it's a really, really lovely ginger tannin colorway mustard. It looks really nice with that, doesn't it? Hmm. There we go. There's that. Yeah, that's not all. Okay. Now, never have I ever. If you know, you know. Right? This is Spin Cycle Yarns. They're dyed in the wool. Now, made in the USA and this color is called cold comfort now I am going to knit Andrea Maori's cardigan that is steeped knit with dyed in the wool and Color work clearly because it's staked. You're all yelling at the screen. Oh, Kylie, who am I? Who am I? Um, she did a jumper version, she did a Jumper version did a cardigan version. My internet decided that it's going to go really slow now. Um, it's in my queue. Feel free to friend me on here. Oh, Stone crop cardi. Um, spin cycle yarns dyed in a wool, which is a sport weight. Oh, yeah, I see that. And magpie fibers, domestic fingering. Um, I've got some magpie fibers. Um, I might use that. Might not. Who knows? Um, but I have. It, it's really hard to get here in Australia. And I managed to get it when I was um, shopping at my local yarn store in Sydney online. That noise you can hear is my husband getting in the shower after work. Now, two more things I want to show you, but I need to stand up and grab this one. Just excuse me. Talk about yourselves. <clears throat> okay. I'm back. Okay. I'll talk about that in a moment. Now, tools. Let's talk tools. I, many moons ago, when I first started knitting again, um, 
was unsure of the whole blocking your knitwear and and how important it was and um you know knit once something once you finish knitting something you haven't finished knitting it um it's not finished it's not ready for photos or any of that kind of stuff you actually need to block your knitwear now if you don't know what blocking is it's basically soaking the garment in a wool friendly wash a no rinse wash i use um i've actually got some here some tuft woolens i bought a stack of tuft woolens in one go to save on shipping like i've had this for so long look it's and it just smells divine it's i can't even tell you what this one is because it's but yeah I, and i stick that in my um i also put the tough woolen soap blocks into or so cakes of soap into my project bag so that my knitting smells lovely when i'm knitting on it but anyway so that that would is or soak soak is another brand of leave-in wool wash so you soak your garment for about 20 minutes half an hour sometimes longer it depends what you've knit and um, what you're trying to achieve and then you lay it out on blocking mats and you pin it into place now you pin it so that it dries in the shape that it's meant to be knit to now I use a combination of T pins now these are very much like um, and look I'm sorry if I'm telling you how to suck eggs and you already know this but I like knit picks T pins right and then the knitters blocks now I've kept mine in here this is probably the best purchase ever um, on my knitters blocks and these are dangerous but they are pins that you can use to pin out your garment now to let it dry now with shawls and things you sometimes need blocking wires as well and that's a whole other conversation um, but you can you can get those from your yeah, local yarn store um, quite re readily okay so those now the thing is as you can probably tell using the pins you actually need to you need something to stick the pins into and a towel is not enough because it will a towel isn't enough because it doesn't have enough depth for you to be able to get the pin in and get the pin to stay in so um, I have been using these play mats that um, my kids I, I think I bought for my grandkids they never use them and they're those interconnecting rubber mats with the letters in them the letters pulled out well, I've been using that for years and it's worked perfectly fine the thing is that they're of an age now where they're <laughs> the rubber is starting to perish and every time I put it out on my dining room table on the back deck which is where I block my knitting um by the time I'm packing it up it oh, I don't know it looks like a clown sneezed everywhere and it's just all this red and yellow and you know this vibrant brightly colored rubber in bits and bobs all over my back deck which blows away it's not a problem you know but it was time for me to upgrade my blocking mats so I had I have had my eyes on the Coco Knits blocking mats for ever so I did this I know right now quite aside from anything else can we just talk about the packaging i mean please ladies and gentlemen is that not stunning or is that not stunning i haven't even opened it yet because i 
I wanted to show you how lovely it is. Look at that. Now the great thing about this is that it um, it comes with a blocking cloth that you sit over the top of this and each of these blocks are an inch square. So it helps you to block out your garments to the correct measurements that they need to be blocked to. Um, check your gauge cloth. Use this under or over your hand knits while blocking to ensure correct measurements. Gingham checks have been woven to one inch squares for use as a two dimensional ruler. How clever is that? So clever. Now, I'll do a proper review once I've used these, but they've also got they're um they sort of got a felt on the back of them which is great so yeah and so it comes with that and then it also comes with some more t-pins because you've never got enough t-pins um i now have the best possible kit in the world for blocking my knits no excuses there sunshine mind you i do like blocking it's sort of it's there's something very satisfying about soaking your knits at the end now before we wrap up and we're sort of getting a little bit long in the tooth i was worried i wouldn't have enough content <laughs> it was i kidding I wanted to have a bit of a chat to you about colour and how to put colours together. Now, most of us, well, no, I shouldn't say most of us, we know what looks good, right? We know, we know what colours go together well. If you're anything like me, I have to be really careful that I don't pair everything with black because, you know, or white. <laughs> but I, I work in marketing and communications. It's, it's the space in which I work. And a lot of the work that I have done in the past is design work. So graphic design, you know, desktop publishing, that kind of thing, laying out magazine articles and this and the like. And... A tip I learnt pretty early on when I started doing that was to to watch magazines and see what magazines were doing and what colours they were putting together and TV ads and how they were laying out print and that kind of stuff and what colours they were putting together because that would give you a really good jumping off point for where trends were heading in terms of your colour placement and fonts and all of that kind of thing. So how does that translate to our knitting? And that's really why we're all here. We're here to talk about knitting. Um, I, I bought a colour wheel on Amazon. It wasn't expensive. Less than a skein of yarn. And I know it's only cardboard. But this can be so handy when putting colours together, especially for things like um, a Stephen West shawl, a thon, or you're pulling together colours and you're not sure whether or not they'll, how they'll mesh, or um, just to, to help you become a little more confident with how you put your colors together now this is an artist's color wheel so what this tells you is if you yellow if you've got yellow and you add black to your paint you'll end up with this dirty mustard color or yellow and you add white it will become this creamy color okay and then it's you know adding all the different colors but on the other side are the basic rules of color theory now 
this is not a color theory class this is not a I'm not here to help you pick your colors but I'm here to make it easier for you hey um, there's a tetrad of colors and there's split complementary colors and and as a general rule if you follow complementary colors or the triad or the tetrad of colors you will end up with colors that go together beautifully now there are enough instructions on here that talks about monochromatic complementary colors split complementary triad tetrad key colors and the art of mixing color so if you are somebody who who struggles with deciding what colors are going to look together in your knitting do yourself a favor nobody needs to know you've got one you can just say you picked the colors yourself because you did <laughs> so um that's my hot tip hot tip best money i ever spent i think it cost me 20 bucks um and it took a while to arrive but seriously girls do yourself girls and guys do yourself a favor makes life so much easier okay well now that i have made an absolute hot mess of this room and i've spoken to you for a while though we hit the certainly hit the one hour mark that's for sure um my eyes are so bad i actually can't see the <laughs> i can't see how long i've been talking to you but i do know that i'm looking not looking at you i'm sorry I've, I've got the camera turned around today I normally have the phone back to me but I don't today um, anyway so I'm heading off tomorrow morning on a bit of an epic road trip um, we the primary healthcare center in on the western cape of Cape York is in Mapoon is being opened um, with an official ceremony and I'm heading up the project team for that the, the event team so we head out of here tomorrow morning um, there's a bit of a convoy of us heading up into the Cape um, by four wheel drive to the centre we normally fly um, and you know we've got some dignitaries coming it's a little bit fancy a little bit fancy opening so um this is a culmination of about six months of work so it's a pretty big deal so i'm recording this while i'm meant to be i should actually be packing because i'm away for almost two weeks so we go up we do the um the building has made it to practical completion and there's handover to take place and there's lots of stuff that needs to go on um so yeah quite the big event um we've got a charter flight flying in and all sorts of stuff so um pretty and it's a big charter plane like big anyway so that's i'm heading off for work for that so i'm up actually up in cape york for the next two weeks the great thing is is that my colleague who um i'm traveling in the vehicle with he likes to drive so that means i get to net so and I've, you know, he knows me well enough to know that that's absolutely what I'll be doing. I'll be needing. Um, so I'm heading off to do that. Um, and so, you know, my husband's going to be batching it. And I'm going to have no housework to do of an evening. So I might do some recording and, and catch some footage of um, Cape York and the work that I'm doing up in Cape York. If I can to share with you, if you're at all interested sorry i'm just thinking about a couple of things i want to say before i finish which is very clunky so apologies um firstly if you're still here oh my god you've hung through to the end you've probably needed to watch this in two or three sittings because i can be a lot even for my husband um <laughs> 
for this long um so if you're still here thank you so much for hanging around um i am a little bit surprised at the amount of views i got on my last video and the amount of comments so thank you so so very much um oh i'm gonna finish the blanket thanks thanks for all your comments seriously i'm gonna finish it i think i might take this with me i'm gonna finish it all that goodness yarny goodness um this is going to be a hot mess to edit but i wanted to say um a huge huge thank you to everybody who's tuned in and subscribed um please hit the like button hit the subscribe give me some of that youtube love um tell your friends about me um share it on your insta whatever you like you know let people know about this strange aussie girl who lives in far north queensland in tropical far north queensland and knits with wool um yeah i'm a nut anyway until next time if you're not knitting something you love stop stop and cast on something that you are gonna love until next time for my little beach sack i'll see you later bye